Prepare your room by making sure the walls and floors are even and suitable to support the kitchen cabinets. Find out the highest point of the floor and mark where that is on the wall. This will be the point from which to measure the correct level work height for the kitchen and will ensure that adjustments to the plinth won't be necessary later. To see if the walls are even, you can use a spirit level or the rail. If there is a gap, you will need to make the wall even before fixing the rail or the cabinets to the wall. A tri-square comes in handy when making sure the corners have a 90 degree angle. Check the wall in order to make sure it's strong enough to support the kitchen. An electric stud finder can be helpful to find a stud or a beam to fasten your rail onto. Time to draw the layout on the wall. Use the drawing that you received in the store to see where each cabinet should be. Always start from the corner. Also, make sure you have the electricity, water and ventilation connections where you want them. Time to fasten the rails onto the walls. Use the highest point of the floor to mark out the correct height for the lower rail, 82 centimetres. Measure the height for the upper rail, in this case, 222 centimetres, because we will use a 220 high cabinet in this kitchen. These measurements are to the bottom of the rails. Note that some cabinets are not made to be mounted on the rail. We will show you how to install them in chapter 3. It is important to have no more than 30 centimetres distance between each screw to ensure the bearing capacity of the rail. Use a flat bottom screw to fix the rail to the wall. It's important to make sure the fitting plate that comes with the rail is properly locked onto the screw. It should be horizontal so that you can adjust the height of the rail. As the wall is uneven in this case, we put spaces between the rail and wall. By leaving a space of 15mm between the sides of the outer cabinet and the end of the rail, you avoid the risk of having the end of the rail visible behind the outer cabinet when you're finished. And you'll make the electrician happy by leaving a space for kitchen lighting cables in case you will put a cover panel on the cabinet. The length of the upper rail you need depends on what kind of cabinet you have close to the corner. <music>